Hi, it's Mrs. Ferris Ford Library, and it's time for us to shine the spotlight on Martin Waddell, a fantastic children's book author. Let me give you a little information about Mr. Waddell. He was born in 1941 in Belfast, Ireland, and he is the writer of children's books. Now, he didn't always plan to do that. He was going to be a soccer star, but when that didn't work out, he went to his second choice. As a child, it says here, Waddell was read to by people who knew how to read stories. He grew up with a fondness of animals and often told stories in a lively manner. This inspired him, and the love of stories stuck with him ever since. He's one of the most prolific and successful story writers, with more than 100 books to his credit. Now, he doesn't do the pictures in them. He has other fantastic artists who do that, but he writes the stories. And he's best known for his stories that are about animals who do things, well, kind of in a people way. He said, my books are written for that special island of time at the end of the day. They are for parents and children to share. And one cannot deny these stories are the perfect treat at bedtime. So we're gonna start off with one of his most famous ones. This is called Owl Babies. The illustrations are done by Patrick Benson. How many owls do you see there? Should we count them? One, two, three. There were once three baby owls, Sarah, Percy, and Bill. They lived in a hole in the trunk of a tree with their owl mother. The hole had twigs and leaves and owl feathers in it. It was their house. One night they woke up and their owl mother was gone. Where's mommy? asked Sarah. Oh my goodness, said Percy. I want my mommy, said Bill. The baby owl, owls thought, all owls think a lot. I think she's gone hunting, said Sarah, to get us our food, said Percy. I want my mommy, said Bill. But their owl mother didn't come. The baby owls came out of their house and they sat on the tree and waited. A big branch for Sarah, a small branch for Percy, and an old piece of ivy for Bill. She'll be back, said Sarah. Back soon, said Percy. I bet you know what Bill said. I want my mommy. It was dark in the woods and they had to be brave for things moved all around them. She'll bring us mice and things that are nice, said Sarah. I suppose so, said Percy. I want my mommy, said Bill. They sat and they thought, all owls think a lot. I think we should all sit on my branch, said Sarah. And they did, all three together. Suppose she got lost, said Sarah. Or a fox got her, said Percy. I want my mommy, said Bill. And the baby owls closed their owl eyes and they wished their owl mother would come. And she came. Wasn't she magnificent? Look at that wingspan. Soft and silent, she swooped through the trees to Sarah and Percy and Bill. Mommy, they cried, and they flapped and they danced and they bounced up and down on their branch. What's all the fuss? Their owl mother asked. You knew I'd come back. The baby owls thought. All owls think a lot. I knew it, said Sarah. And I knew it, said Percy. I love my mommy, said Bill. And that's owl babies. Now our first craft project is we're going to make a picture of the owl babies. So I'm gonna put that 
over to the side in case we need to look at it. And at this point, you need to get out your bag if you picked one up from the library. Inside your bag, if you dumped it out, right now we're going to need that piece of big black cardstock. And we'll need six, let me think, three sets of eyes. And each eye is made up of three parts, so you're gonna get a brown circle, and a black circle, and a white circle for each of the owl's two eyes. So they're going to be, hmm, one, two, three, four, five, six browns, six black circles, and six little white circles. You're also going to find in your bag a clothespin, a pom-pom, a fork, and a little container of paint with its lid, I hope, nicely shut tight. Also for this project, you're going to need, and I assumed you'd have these things at home, a marker and a pencil, a pair of scissors, and a glue stick. Now because we're going to be doing some painting, you may want to put on an old t-shirt or an apron. You also may want to protect the area where you're going to be working. I put down my zebra placement that I do all of my craft projects on so that when I put my paper on it, if I have some paint that goes off the edge, I'm not hurting anything. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is take that bag. Make sure you've emptied it off to the side with the other projects that we're going to be doing. But you're going to take this bag and you're going to rip it. And I'm going to rip mine on the side that isn't a seam. So I'm going to do it on the side that has a little cutout on it. And I'm just going to rip a piece. It's going to stretch pretty much across my paper. So just about the whole length of it. Now you can cut it, but I kind of like ripping it. Can you hear me? And when you've got a piece that's just about as long as your paper is, then turn it over to the side, and then up. Pretty noisy, huh? All right, and then you can just set it off to the side because you're not gonna need it. But this is gonna be the branch of the tree that they're on. So if you want to tear any of it to make it a little rounder at the end, we probably could have cut it, but I kind of like ripping it because it makes it rough like bark would be. And then you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna crumple it up to get some wrinkles in it. And then open it up. And then you can glue it onto your paper. Now, do we want to do that first? Let me just think here. I think we do. So take that glue stick if you have it, or you can use liquid glue, or you can even use tape, but put it all over the back. Like that. I don't know if you can see it. And then stick it right along the bottom edge of your paper. So it's like that. And I should mention, because this is a craft program, we're gonna be doing, I, I'm being very ambitious, I've got four craft projects planned. If you only wanna do one at a time, that's fine. And as we're going along to catch up to each step, feel free to pause the video while you do your part and then set me going again when you're ready. So when you've got that glued on there, then you're gonna take your black marker and just draw some lines and some knot holes. So I'm just gonna go, let's see if we can see this. So I'm just gonna, like there's bark. And then some Doesn't have to look perfect in any way at all. Okay, so that's what my 
branch looks like. And close up your marker so it doesn't get dry. And then the fun starts. Take the clothespin that you have and your pom-pom and pinch the pom-pom with your clothespin. And this is gonna be our paintbrush. Now we're gonna have three owls. That's what I planned on, but if you only wanna do one, you can. But I was gonna have Sarah and Percy and Bill. So I'm gonna take my pencil and draw three ovals on my paper, just to kind of give me an idea of where I'm going to be putting my paint. Can you see those? So I've got three owls. You can make them all the same size or you can take them and have them be different sizes because Sarah was the biggest and then Percy and then Bill. Now, very carefully, we're gonna open our paint. This is washable tempera paint, so it will come out if it gets on your clothes or get someplace. But open your container and then you're going to dip your paintbrush in and sponge it onto those circles that you drew. So I'm just going to And when you do it, do you see how those look like feathers? Don't get it too overloaded with paint to start off because you want that feathery look to it. So there's one. Don't those look like feathers? Now I'm gonna do another one. need to dip it in but don't dip it way down in and when you start putting um, doing your sponging after you dipped it in I would start at the center so there's two and we'll do one more So there are my owls. I'm gonna set that to the side. I'm gonna put the lid closer to my um, paint container. But remember that fork we had? If you'd like to make some little uh, feathery marks around the outside of your owl, you can dip your fork into your paint just gently and then draw outside. Can you see that? See how I'm drawing some little feathers? The paint's trying to make my paper curl. So that's what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around and draw those feathers. Whoever thought of using a fork for a paintbrush? But because these are owl babies, their feathers are still very fluffy. So this is a way to make them look really fluffy. So, what do you think? Do they look like fuzzy, fuzzy baby owls? I'm gonna set that over to the side. And as I said, I'm going to take the lid from my paint put it on until I hear it snap, and then I'm gonna stick that over to the side. I'm also going to put my paintbrush and my fork off to the side because I don't need those right now. So while that's drying, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna assemble the eyes. So as I said, we had one, brown circles for the outside of the eyes. So we have six brown circles. Can you see those? And then I'm going to take my glue stick 
and my black circles, and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six of those, I hope. I'm only seeing five, but I'm sure I have another one around here somewhere. There it is. So I'm gonna put some glue on the black and then stick it onto the brown circle. And I'm gonna put mine not quite centered. I'm gonna have it off a little bit. But you can do it however you want. And it's interesting when you put uh, the black part on, depending whether you put it off to one side or if you put it right in the center, it gives your owl a different expression. It could be happy or sad or scared, or full of wonder. So I'm gonna do that to all six of them. Then we're going to look for those white dots. And those are going to go on the eyes too. Those are going to be the pupils. Our pupils are black. This is when your fingers might get a little sticky with the glue. So one thing I should have suggested at the beginning, I usually do, is to have a wet paper towel nearby so if your fingers do get sticky with glue, you can wipe them off. I seem to be missing one of my white circles, so... Better go get that. I know I had it someplace, but I'm not gonna spend time looking for it. Of course, now I don't know where that one went, so I guess I'll do another one. Crafting is fun. <laughs> there we go. All right, so. There are my eyeballs. And then I've also, in your bag, you should have had a piece of orange paper. And I want you to just cut a triangle. That's going to be something that's pointed at one end and goes across, and that's gonna be the beak. I actually already cut a beak, so, but I need a couple more because I've got three owls, don't I? So let me get my scissors. Cut two more beaks. So now I have one, two, and three beaks. Now I don't think that my paint is quite dry yet. So I may let this sit aside just a little bit, but you can see what our owl eyes will look like. I'll just set them on there so you can see. These owl babies have very big eyes. I may reconsider what size circles I punch for you because these are very big. Oop. And then we'll, I'll be gluing the beaks on, but I'm gonna let the paint dry first. But that's what our three owl babies look like. Do you remember their names? There was Sarah and Percy. And who always wanted his mama? So, enjoy your owl babies. And I'm going to stop for a second. We're going to clear things out of here. We'll get ready for another story and another craft. So, I'll see you in a few. Bye-bye.
So I hope your owls turned out great. We're ready for another story. And this one is called Little Mo. It's of course by Martin Waddell, with pictures by Jill Barton this time. And we're gonna be where it's snowy and cold because that's where polar bears live. Little Mo looked at the ice and she liked it. I love that picture. Bump. Little Mo got up and tried sliding again. Bump. A big one came to help her. More big ones came out onto the ice, sliding and gliding around Little Mo. They were her friends, all of them. And it was nice on the ice and she loved it. The big ones whizzed and they whirled and they twisted and twirled and they raced and they jumped. Did little Mo? Well, she tried. Bump, 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 bump. Little Mo started to cry and she turned away. She didn't like the ice anymore. It was all my idea. Little Mo said to herself. The big ones got tired and went home. They forgot about Little Mo. Little Mo looked at the ice and she liked it again. She slid and she fell, bump. She got up and then she did it again, without falling. And again, and again, and again. All by herself, sliding around on the ice. And little Mo loved it. Just a quick story, so we can get right to our craft with little Mo. So in your bag, you should have had two paper plates. We only want one right now, so pick up your one paper plate, and what I want you to do is fold it in half. And it probably doesn't matter which side is on the outside, whether it's the top of the plate or the bottom of the plate. You just fold it in half like that. Almost looks like a watermelon, doesn't it? The other things you'll need for this uh, craft are some your scissors again your pencil, a black marker, and then something else that you can use for color. So either crayons or markers or colored pencils, whatever you have around the house and whatever you like to use. So you've got your plate folded in half. And well, maybe I should show you what we're going to be making. We're gonna be making a rocking polar bear. So this will be little Mo when she's out on the ice rocking away. So what we're going to need to do is draw a face and a body. We'll draw a little Mo's scarf and that's what we're going to color. And when we cut it out, we're going to make sure that we leave the fold of the plate right up on the bear's back, like that, and we're going to cut carefully along the bottom so that we leave a little strip because that's where, let me put it on the book here because it'll show better, that's where you get the rocking part. So take your plate and at one end draw a circle that could be the bear's head and remember he's got his ears right up on top of his head, or she does depending. So you're going to want a circle with room for ears on top. And I did 
mine in pencil first until I got it right, and then I outlined it with black. So, kind of rough looking right now, but. There's my circle for the head and the two ears. And then I'm going to have the back of the bear going up. So I'm going to draw a line going up from about where the ears are up to the fold, which is on the top. And I'm going to have that go along almost all the way to the end, maybe about an inch from the back side. I better do that a little darker. Maybe I should be doing mine in black for you, just to show you. But the reason I did it in pencil first was so I could get my lines where I wanted them. And I didn't draw a pattern on your plate for you because I really wanted to see if you can make it yourself. So I drew one line up to the top fold and then about an inch from the end, I drew a line down and that's gonna be the bear's body. This will be his hind leg. And then up front, I need to add the scarf and the front legs. So I'm gonna draw a little bit more of those with my pencil and then I'll outline it once I have it where I want it. About like that. And I want a scarf to come around from the back. And then it down this way. over that with my marker so I can show you what that mean by it. So I drew his body. So there's his front leg, his back leg, and this little square here is going to be where I'll cut out for in between the legs. But I'm going to make sure that I cut it up above the bottom of the plate because I want the bottom of the plate from here to here to be the rocking part. And then I'm going to draw in a scarf for him or her because Mo had a scarf on in the store. my bear and I need to draw a face on it. And the polar bear has black eyes and a black nose and then this part right around his nose where his nose and his mouth are. That's called his muzzle. Much like we call what a dog has. So let's draw on two eyes with my marker and my black nose. And then I'm going to erase my pencil marks because I don't need those anymore. They were just kind of a guide so that I made sure that I fit the bear onto my paper plate. Now I'm going to color the scarf first and then I'll cut it all out because I think it's easier to do that when it's all in one big piece. So get your markers or your crayons or your pencils and go ahead and color it. Now in our story, Mo had a scarf that had lots of colors in it. Should we go back and see? She had a stripey scarf, didn't she? But you can make it a solid scarf, whatever you want. So I think I'm going to Go ahead and do some stripes. And I 
wish I had big fat markers with me because I think it would go faster. You can decide whether you want to have all your stripes the same color or whether you want to create a pattern. And I'm leaving some white space in between so I don't have to cover so much of it. And remember, while you're coloring or cutting or drawing, you can stop the video and do each part and then turn it back on and catch up. That's my scarf all colored in. And then I'm just going to use my scissors and cut it out. Now remember, you don't cut along the top. And when you cut the part in between his front legs and his hind legs, make sure you leave an edge of the plate so that you have a rocker that will go from his front toes to his back toes. So first I'm going to cut this off. I'll round it out just a little bit. Like that. Okay. And then I'll cut down. And I'm actually leaving a little bit in the first one that I made, I left the top part above his ears, so I wish I'd made his head go up a little bit more, but I'll just cut around so there's an outline around him. I'll show you what I mean. Like that. I left a little bit up there, so it'll hold it all together. And then I'm cutting around his scarf. And I've been cutting through both layers as I've done this. And that's pretty easy when you're going around the outside, but I'm going to warn you, it's hard to do that there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut one layer at a time. And to make it a little easier to get uh, my scissors in there, because my scissors, even though they do have a pretty pointed end to them, I still find it's hard to go through the heavy paper plates. So my trick is always to fold it right on the line and do a little snip. And that gives a place for my scissors to go in and cut all around that rectangle. And this is probably something even if you're good at using scissors, you might want to have mom or dad or somebody who's there with you do this cutting part because it's a little tricky. I'll show you mine when I finish this part. So what I've done is cut out that rectangle around, right under his belly. And then to make it easy for myself, 
I'm going to trace around that with my pencil so that I can cut out the back side. But that way I'm only having to cut through one layer at a time. Trace through, so now I have that same shape on the inside. And once again, I'll do a little bit of a pinch, I'll snip so I have a starting point, and then I can get my scissors in to cut through, but not all the way to the bottom because I want to keep that rocker. Almost done. And there's my rocking bear. Let's put him on here. Just make sure I've got him all. Kind of lumbering across the snow. So that's our second craft project. So I'm gonna clear off my table and get ready for another story and another fun craft. So I'll be back. Hi, I'm back with another story by Martin Waddell. This one is called Squeak-a-Lot. The illustrations are by Virginia Miller, and it's about a mouse. This is published by Green Willow Books. In an old, old house lived a small, small mouse who had no one to play with. So the small, small mouse went out of the house to find a friend to play with. Is he in there? Yeah. And he found a bee. Can I play with you? The mouse asked the bee. Of course, said the bee. What will we play? Asked the mouse. We'll play buzz a lot, said the bee. Buzz. But the mouse did not like it a lot, so he went to find another friend to play with. And he found a dog. Can I play with you? The mouse asked the dog. Of course, said the dog. What will we play? Asked the mouse. We'll play wolf a lot, said the dog. Woof, 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 woof. But the mouse didn't like it a lot. So he went to find another friend to play with. And he found a chicken. Can I play with you? The mouse asked the chicken. Of course, said the chicken. What will we play? Asked the mouse. We'll play cluck a lot, said the chicken. Cluck, 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 cluck. But the mouse didn't like it a lot. So he went to find another friend to play with. He found a cat. Can I play with you? The mouse asked the cat. And... Wham! Bam! Scram! The mouse did not like it a lot. Squeak, 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 squeak. He ran away through the long, long grass playing squeak a lot all by himself. Squeak, 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 squeak. Squeak, 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 squeak. Some mice found the mouse. Can we play with you? The mice asked the mouse. Of course, said the mouse. What will we play? Asked the mice. Oh, buzz a lot, said the mouse. Buzz. And all of them liked it a lot. Woof a lot, said the mouse. Woof, 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 woof. And all of them liked it a lot. Cluck a lot, said the mouse. Cluck, 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 cluck. And all of them liked it a lot. And then wham, bam, scram, said the mouse. 
squeak, 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 squeak. The mice chase the mice. Let's get that right. The mice chase the mouse through the long, long grass back home to the old, old house. And together they played sleep a lot. So are you ready for another craft? We're going to make a mouse that goes squeak a lot. So in your bag of goodies, I hope you found a gray pattern. And you probably found some little punches, some circle punches. There are two that are white. I don't know if you can see those. And one that's gray, the same color as the mouse. And there are also two little black ones. And when we put those on the white ones, those are gonna be his eyes. And then you also have another paper plate. You've got a craft stick and two magnets and a little scrap of pink paper. So what, you'll, what else you'll need, let me just think, you'll need that black marker and you'll need your scissors and you'll need your glue stick. And mine's over there, so I better get it or else I won't be able to make this. So that's what you're gonna need. So the first thing we're gonna do is use our scissor skills and we're gonna cut out the big triangle, which is his body, the skinny. Well, I'm gonna tell you to hold off cutting out the skinny triangle. That's gonna be his tail, but we'll, we need to do something to that first. Um, we're gonna cut out the two bigger ears we're going to leave those right now. Those are going to be the inner ears. I'll show you mine that we'll cut out in pink. And then these two strips right here, we're going to have you color those with your black marker because those are going to be his whiskers. All right. So you can go ahead and cut those out. And I probably should have had mine cut out at a time so that I didn't have to do it while I was filming it, but it doesn't take long. The triangle, the big one, is going to be his body, and it's really just three straight sides. That's why it's called a triangle. So I'm going to cut that. There's one side. There's two sides. One more to go. So there's my mouse's body. And I'm gonna cut his outer ears. Those are the two bigger, they're not circles, but they're ear shapes, I guess. So there, I've got ears and the body all cut out. I'm just gonna set those aside. I'm gonna take my scrap of pink. And you can do one of two things for the inner ears. You can cut the ones out on your pattern and then trace them onto your pink paper and cut them out. And that's probably the easier thing for you to do. So what I did when I was making mine was I really just cut these and held them in place. But I think for you, it's probably going to be easier to trace it. So in that case, you really only need to cut out one of the ear, inner ears. And then either with a pencil or with your black marker, you're going to trace around that. And do you see I put it over to one side so I have room for one here? And then I can move my pattern over and do the other one over on the other side so I can cut both of the inner ears out of that pink scrap. So let me do that. So 
So there's one traced on there. I think I'll flip it the other way just to make sure I have plenty of room. So when I put it down to trace the other one, I just actually flipped it so that the flat side's on the bottom. And while you have your marker out, you have that piece with the long skinny triangle and the two bars. You can color in the two bars. So just color those with your marker. There's one all colored in. And then the other one. So now I've got his whiskers cut out. And then what I'm gonna do, let me show you on my sample. You see he's got little lines on his tail because a mouse's tail is usually pretty skinny and it doesn't have a lot of fur on it. In fact, a lot of mice have no fur at all on their tails. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw some lines on there. And I'll show you what I mean. like that. And then I'll cut it out. And again, it's just two long sides. There's one. There's two. So now I just have to cut off the bottom part. And I'm going to cut off my two whiskers. Now you could always use yarn for the whiskers or some string if you wanted to, but I like the way that the paper looks. I'm just going to make sure I don't lose that on my black and white work area here. And then with my long skinny tail, I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to use some of my scrap paper. I'm going to lay it right down on one of the pieces that's left over from cutting out the big triangle. And I'm going to do those lines on the other side too. So that when I'm finished, I have those little lines on this hairless tail on both the front and the back of it. lines on the front and on the back and it doesn't matter whether they're the same distance apart or not and then also one last thing with your marker before you put it away you're going to want to curl that tail so you can just rub it against your marker or you can even curl it around your marker and hold it there for a second and the paper will kind of mold to that shape so that you've got curly tail for your mouse. Okay. So, last thing that we need to cut out then are our two pink ears, and then we can start putting our mouse together. There's one. Almost done. How are you doing? Okay, so I'm just gonna check and be sure that I've got everything I need to put the mouse together. I've got his body. I've got two gray ears and two pink ears to go inside them. I've got two pieces of whisker and I've got those dots. I've got the gray one that's gonna be for his nose, and I've got the white or the black, 
and white with a black for his eyes. So those are all the pieces we need to assemble our mouse. So the first thing you're going to do is with your triangle like this, you're going to fold about just about maybe an inch all along that long edge. And press it down like that. So I had it and I folded that up and I pressed it firmly across there. Okay. And then I'm going to take the other side and I'm gonna fold it in the other direction. So, because this is gonna be the base for our mouse and this is gonna be his face. So I'm not gonna fold it all the way down, but almost. So I'm gonna fold it like that. And again, press it real well. So there's our mouse. Doesn't look like a mouse quite yet though, because he needs his ears and his eyes and his nose and his whiskers. So, get your glue stick and put glue on the back of one of the pink pieces and glue it right in the center of the gray ear like that. And do it with both. So you've got another pink piece, put some glue on it Stick it right on the ear, like that, okay. Then you can put a little bit of glue. You're gonna be putting the ears on about like that. So you can see that there's not very much that's going to be getting glue on it. And what I like to do is actually put it on the corners of the top. So I'm going to put, I'm using the purple glue, but I don't know whether you're going to be able to see it. But do you see, I just put a little bit on each side and then I'm just going to stick my ears on there. You may want to hold them in place for just a minute till that glue sets a bit. And now he's looking a bit more like a mouse, isn't he? Got a little bit of glue on my mat here and I don't want to get stuck to it. So I'm going to take and then, let's see if I've got my pieces here. I see an eyeball, but I only see one eyeball. I may have to do another one. I love it when I lose them on this mat. Oh well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take those two black pieces. I guess if I hold them up against my face, we're gonna crisscross them so that they become his whiskers. So you need a little bit of glue right in the middle. And then make them into an X. Just like that. And then you're going to glue that right on the tip of his face. So again, put a little bit of glue right on that tip Put the whiskers there, like that. And then find that gray circle. Put a little bit of glue on that because that's his nose. Now in some of the uh, craft projects for this, I saw they used a pom-pom, but I found the pom-poms. First of all, I couldn't find gray pom-poms to match. And I did want to go along with the book because the book didn't have a pink nose mouse. He had a gray nose mouse. So I thought the circle would work fine, but, and it's not quite so heavy. And then we're gonna assemble our eyes. I found one. I wonder, there's no way I'm gonna find that black circle though, so I may have to punch another one. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your white, one of your white circles and Set it aside and put a little bit of glue on the black. And this is when your fingers might get a little bit sticky. And then stick those right on the eye, the white eyes. And you'll want to do that with both. But 
as I said, I think mine dropped on the floor and when you've got a black rug, it doesn't make it easy. So I'm just gonna go over here and get my punch and punch another black circle so that we don't get holed up here. Helps to get the right size punch. So there's a new black circle. I'll put a little bit of glue on it, stick it on the white dot. And you can get different expressions on your mouse depending on where you put that black dot. If you put it to one side, he can be looking down, he can look at himself, he can be cross-eyed. If you put it right in the center, he can be staring at you. Um, if you notice with mine, I made him a little bit silly. I didn't even put the eyes on even because I thought he looked more fun that way. So then I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue on the eye, back of the eyeball and stick it on the mouse's face. And then the same with the other one. There he is. Then take your tail. Let's see, where did my tail go? There it is, it's a curly part. And you're going to want to stick that, when you turn your mouse over, you're going to want to stick it either on this side or on this side, but you're going to glue it on the back of your mouse. And you can decide whether you want his mouse, his tail curling towards you or away. I'm going to switch mine because I put the glue on the other side, but there's his tail. And if you want it more curled, remember, just get out your marker and curl it around there. And just hold it in place for a second until the paper kind of conforms, knows it's supposed to bend that way. So there's his tail. And you might wonder, okay, what about this craft stick that you've got and the paper plate? Mrs. Ferris, we didn't use those. Well, because the mouse in the story was having so much fun with all of his games, at least when he was doing it with the mice, I thought we could make a little game with this. So take your magnets and using your glue stick, glue one of your magnets onto your craft stick this and the other one you're going to want to glue to the bottom of your mouse and then you can play buzz a lot or woof a lot or cluck a lot or wham bam squam or squeak a lot you put your mouse on your plate and take your craft stick and put it underneath and you can make that mouse go around on your plate. So that's our Squeak-A-Lot craft. Now we're gonna have one more story and you'll find that you have instructions for the last project in your bag it didn't need to be done here. It's such a quick one, but I just wanted to toss it in because one of my very favorite books by Martin Waddell is Farmer Duck. So you have a, a pattern in there and one more paper plate to make the duck. The illustrations in this book are by Helen Oxenbury. There was once a duck who had the bad luck to live with a lazy old farmer. The duck did the work and the farmer stayed all day in bed. The duck fetched the cow from the field. How goes the work? called the farmer. The duck answered, quack. The duck brought the sheep from the hill. How goes the work? called the farmer. And the duck answered, can you say it with me? Quack. The duck put the hens in their house. How goes the work? called the farmer. And the duck answered, quack. 
the farmer got fat through staying in bed, and the poor duck oh, got fed up with working all day. How goes the work? Quack. 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 The duck did the sawing and the gardening and the dishes and the ironing all by himself. How goes the work? Quack. How goes the work? Quack. Well, soon the poor duck was sleepy and weepy and tired. The hens and the cow and the sheep got very upset. They loved the duck, so they held a meeting under the moon, and they made a plan for the morning. Moo, said the cow. Ba, said the sheep. Clock, said the hens. And that was the plan. It was just before dawn and the farmyard was still. Through the back door and into the house crept the cow and the sheep and the hens. They stole down the hall. That means they tiptoed. They creaked up the stairs. They squeezed under the bed of the farmer and wriggled about and the bed started to rock and the farmer woke up and he called, how goes the work? And moo, ba, cluck. They lifted the bed and he started to shout and they banged and they bounced the old farmer about and about and about right out of bed. And he fled with the cow and the sheep and the hens, mooing and buying and clucking behind him. Down the lane, moo! Through the fields, ba! Over the hill, cluck! And he never came back. Well, the duck awoke and waddled wearily into the yard, expecting to hear how goes the work. Nobody spoke. And then the cow and the sheep and the hens came back. Quack, asked the duck. Moo, said the cow. Ba, said the sheep. Cluck, said the hens, which told the duck the whole story. And then mooing and buying and clucking and quacking they all set to work on their farm. So that's Farmer Duck. And I hope you'll send me a picture of what your duck looks like. I should have taken a picture of mine, but I forgot to bring him. So maybe I'll add it in at the end. So thank you for coming to our Spotlight program. I have a feeling we ran a little longer than usual, but I hope you enjoyed it. And next month, we'll be back with another Spotlight on another wonderful children's book, either an author or an illustrator or a character. Keep an eye out.